Miss. The official podcast, episode 330. This is a special edition. Uh, boys, have you seen what's been going on in the world recently? Oh, yeah. A lot of stuff, a lot, Charlie. Yeah. A lot of drama, mm-hmm. one would say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's like start with something positive. Drama. Well, yeah. yeah. There's, uh, there's a lot more than drama, but a good thing that's happened is Resident Evil uh-huh. 4 was very good. Oh. Uh-huh. Resident Evil 4 remake. Oh, that's good. We, we already knew the original was, was very good. S- was that screenshot one of you posted real where people were complaining that the girl was no longer... <laughs> yeah. She was wearing panties or something? Is that real? Yeah, so um, there have been a few like reviews and uh, like comments online about how how bad the new Resident Evil 4 remake is because you can't look up Ashley's skirt anymore and see her underwear and she doesn't like comment on it or anything now. You can't actually see anything. They've removed that feature. Um, so people are up in yeah, arms about original, it. I haven't, yeah. I haven't played it, but in the original, she's like the president's daughter and you're basically bodyguarding her, right? And yes. then when she climbs up a, a ladder, you can basically look up her skirt and she makes a snarky remark like, don't look pervert. And they removed all of that. Yeah. Fucking woke liberals taking away my panty shots. And she's supposed to be like, what, 17 in the game? I think. No, she's an adult. I don't, I don't know, know where that seventeen's yeah. coming from. <laughs> yeah, no, she's just oh, an okay. adult. Yeah. I don't know, I just thought it was one of those I'm protecting the president's like schoolgirl daughter thing. No, no, no. no, no. She's she's so she's people a... are really angry at no, this. In the in <laughs> yeah. the original she is twenty. Yeah. So perfectly fine to look at her okay. underwear. I don't think uh <laughs> I, I don't think like the the outrage is like super widespread or anything. It's not like there's going to be people at the front of Capcom with pickets or anything. Um, and it's definitely not affecting game sales. Yeah. It, it, to be fair, though, there's no reason to remove it. I think that's super unnecessary. You could have just kept it and kept it goofy. It's not like it's the most fucking offensive thing in the world. Yeah, but, yeah for uh, sure. But like, it's not like the, they didn't necessarily remove it. They, they remade the game and didn't include yeah, it. Well, so it's like it might not even come across their mind, basically. Yeah, it's just an omission. I mean, it was definitely a conscious decision. They didn't forget about it coincidentally. Yeah, it was an omission. There are people, though, I've seen on Reddit that won't shut the fuck up about it, calling, um, who is it, Bandai Super Woke for removing the um, panty shots as well as like a couple lines of dialogue. So there definitely is outrage. There's always going to be outrage. The funny thing is it would be woke to keep it in and for the main character to roofie the girl and then rape her <laughs> have you guys been paying attention to the game developers conference which is apparently going on currently yeah and i have seen oodles of women attending this conference <laughs> lamenting the fact that they cannot let their drinks out of sight for even a single minute it's fucking insane. because apparently yeah, date rape drugs wild. are mm-hmm. so prevalent i have seen so many tweets from women in the industry i want to read a bunch for you guys to uh appreciate just what these women have to deal with it is, it is such a bizarre culture so julie elvin says fucking infuriated by how many years in a row in a row harassment assault and drink spiking happens at gdc the results are traumatic and also re-traumatize those of us who experienced assault and harassment before for accessibility the bare minimum of a safe environment should exist I... my heart is with everyone who got harassed it sounds like it sounds like every single drink at GDC was roofied, or it, it, like an attempt was made to roofie every single drink. I didn't know roofies were that common. I thought they were like kind of uh, like a, a Me rare neither. thing. How the fuck are yeah? How are all these men getting their hands on like fucking narcotics so easily? Oh, so why? Like how? Uh, then again, I, I feel like he, I feel like it's a really stupid thing to do as well. Like it. Surely it doesn't work. Like, what ha- what happens? Like, you roofie someone at, at GDC and they're, like, stumble around and, and pass out on the dance floor, kind of? Like, what's what's the tactic there? I don't get it. Well, I assume they try to corner them as they're passing out in the elevator or something and goat them into coming into their hotel room or something. I've also seen reports of just outright autism. Like, these women saying that, you know, the dude came up to my booth listened to me talk, interrupted me, and just asked me out on a date, and I told yeah. him I was married. He asked me out. He asked me out to his fucking hotel room. Here's a uh, tweet chain from a woman called Bexeter Ascending. 
ex Saltzman. She says, I don't drink at GDC. Like, I mean that not just for alcohol. I don't drink anywhere at GDC that isn't completely controlled. At parties, I grab something in a can, usually cider, and I carry it around completely full for hours. When I'm thirsty, I drink out of my own water bottle that I control and has a locking lid. Or I get a water, or I get a water from the bar, etc., and I guzzle it instantly. It goes from cup to my mouth in seconds. I eat nothing at any party ever. I broke this rule at my own party, but since people I didn't explicitly invite started arriving towards the end, I stopped eating. I didn't know, I didn't know them all, and I have too much fear to trust anyone implicitly anymore. God damn. This is the darker reason behind my I'm always hungry at GDC. If you see me, friends, hand me a prepackaged snack. <laughs> Gotta be careful. Those <laughs> Gotta be factory snacks sealed. can also be roofied. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, that is like the like unironically, that is probably the right way yeah. of uh, handling mm-hmm. yourself around these fucking maniacs that are out there it's, roofying drinks, apparently. Especially if it's that common, for sure. I totally understand. Yeah. I would be the same. I'd be paranoid it's to that, the... Like, max on the surface of it it sounds so paranoid but at the same time like yeah this is probably no, good sense. advice i mean if it has happened before i wouldn't even send any woman in my life there but if she for some reason had to attend then yeah i mean don't drink anything just use your own bottle ever don't leave it you're, prob- you're probably right you can't you probably can't trust the prepackaged food either the, the, these uh these date rapists or whatever probably going direct to the manufacturer's source and like roofing them there, there as well <laughs> like Going to this the production line, sneaking it on the conveyor food. belt. Yeah, this seems pervasive. Are, are you gonna notice if he if he uses a syringe to like inject a cupcake with something? No. Oh my god! I mean, I don't know just how how determined these men are, but it, it is it is just hysterical to me. I guess that this hyper woke industry is just full of these men that go around raping, and I have not heard any man. By the way, it's only women speaking about this. None of the men. How curious. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, what do you mean? Of course it's not going to be men. <laughs> They're not going to roofie each other. No, you mean he's uh, talking about the, the no, problem, I, I think. Yeah, talking about it, like calling it out. It is only women telling each other to be careful. I've not seen a single man say anything like, yeah, we need to do better for the women or anything. They act like this doesn't even happen or exist. Uh, you think all, like, all the men are doing it? Or what's the reason behind being silent? Because I doubt like all the men are doing it. It's totally like a few I bad apples, too. right? I don't know what... Yeah, there has to be a few bad apples, but they have to be maybe the kinds where, like, he's your boss, you know? You don't want to call him out. Yeah, but no, that e- fuck that. Even if my boss was, <laughs> like, being that brazen and yeah, talking to me though. about... Yeah, that's race. just you, though. No, it's not. I, d- I don't think anyone... Any so these reason... people are not going to call each other out. I-, I was just saying how it's... How? You're, these are exact kind of people, the male feminists, who will just talk all day about the fucking patriarchy and manspreading and mansplaining, but when it actually matters and women get roofied and they're scared to even eat and drink at a fucking party, all of a sudden it's just crickets. Nothing. Chirp, chirp. Well, you agree with that, Charlie? You, you genuinely believe that, like, ma- like male employees won't rat on their boss roofing people? Oh, 100%. Y- yeah, Jackson, I actually really what do, do think mean? that. What Jackson, like... Yeah, Harvey Harvey Weinstein, for instance, was an industry like an open secret. That's what they call an open secret, okay. where everybody knows, but not all of them are too pussyish to ever testify or do anything about it because they okay, don't want yeah. to burn that bridge. That's 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 a good example. That's fair. I just I have too much faith in people. I guess I don't know. <laughs> you do, yeah, clearly. <laughs> that's, that's a okay. very you sweet thing about optimism. you, though, Jackson. You're super trusting. Yeah. Yeah, like a that's little cute. dog. Easy. To, okay, thanks. <laughs> Easy to take advantage of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that takes me back to the My time when about Kaya these... roofied me basically with yeah. alcohol in the 2018 trip. <laughs> <laughs> Very trusty. Here, Jackson, okay, let, it's water. Let's uh... drink up. You need. You need water. To be, uh, to, to okay, be to be fair, uh, before before fucking rumors start, I already have way too many rumors about me out there. Uh, I did not put a drug in your anything. Well, I literally just you handed did. you vodka, <laughs> and you drank it, and you that's said, yeah, this is water. Because <laughs> I was already that's shit-faced. That's on you. If you can tell fucking water from vodka, you were drinking it like, mm, yes, this is so <laughs> thirst quenching. Why am I getting drunker? <laughs> <laughs> It actually is shocking that you you. didn't know it was vodka. I I was already drunk. What do you mean? You could have. Well, yeah, but even you could have been lava. 
<laughs> that he was hung over the next day all day. I remember now. <laughs> I wasn't hung over. I was he like catatonic the for the next three days. I was so... Because it was like a mix. <laughs> it was a mix of being so fucking hung over as well as like jet lagged. It was an awful combination. I those. Oh yeah, you were like super tired. Also, you hit your head pretty bad on like oh, a yeah. counter or something. Yeah. I reckon, yeah, I reckon I actually table, did I have a, it was, but. I reckon I did have like a slight concussion from that maybe because I was like super dizzy the next day. I don't know if that was just the hangover there. <laughs> it could have been any know. combination be of things be really. Concussion. How hard yeah, did I, yeah. how hard did I hit the table? <laughs> you, you potato sacked it. You went down hard. hard. <laughs> It was no blood, right? Kaya taking no. tips from Bill Cosby. Hey, look, I did not sexually molest Jackson. I can say that. Missed opportunity. Yeah, I'm glad you can say that. I can't. That I don't time, remember I did the kiss night. Boys, though. I don't remember anything <laughs> after you handed me that book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, what else? Let's see what else happens. Um. Well, wait. We can't sideline. Ban is in. You huh? kind of sidelined Charlie what? on the, on Resident Evil 4 Remake. Did you actually want to talk about oh, it, Charlie? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I did. Was just, I was just giving I a little good to, news to it. Oh, That's okay. All. So it is but actually... Good. I've edited the moist meter, so I already know your opinion. But so it's it's about a 90%. Mm -hmm. You loved it. Do you think it was better than the original? Yeah. Well, I don't even remember beating the original, so it's hard for me to compare, but uh, I certainly like the gameplay more. I've heard people say that the aiming in, in it is like super sluggish or something. Like you can't aim well. There's a couple times where things seem a little unresponsive, but it was very seldom. Like I didn't really have that issue a lot. And would you say it's scary? No. Okay. Not even close. Sweet. All right. Continue, Kaya. What, what did you want to say? Mm -hmm. Oh, have you guys been keeping up with the TikTok man shit? Where they are. Uh, I saw the Congress once in a while. Yeah. I saw some clips here and there. Congress fucking sucks. Ooh. I also I, pretty much just saw the clips. It's, it's always the same thing where, like, these men, they just drag a tech CEO off his private island, like, once a year to scream at him for the cameras in Congress while they just look awkward trying to imitate human emotions and shit. This one was kind of interesting, though, because it really brought out the addiction in people, I think. The amount of fucking just the allergic reaction from people to even the possibility of TikTok getting banned was really creepy. It has such a stranglehold on their ball sacks. Like what? How? Like what? Just screaming about how TikTok should not be banned. I feel like you and Charlie any of these? Uh, are going to disagree about this one. I, I think... Uh... I I imagine you, Kaya. When you do, you want it banned? Oh yeah. Like for every person in the country, or just for government officials? I mean, for every person in the country, I don't think it's good for anyone. Um, it's yeah, not it's... particularly the privacy implications. That how is it good? Yeah, so that's where you and I differ, because I hate the idea that we can just start banning things because they're deemed not good. I feel like you'd be really against that since you hate censorship and all that. I yeah. really think that's a terrible idea. That seems counterintuitive to what you normally say, Kaya. Like, as yeah. a person who regularly to... goes on Kiwi farms, you would think you'd be in favor of letting people have their own forums. Kiwi yeah, having farms their own freedom to make their decisions. Oh, so, I, I because agree, it makes you miserable, it should be banned. The decision. <laughs> Eight-year-olds aren't making their own decision to be on there, nor do 12-year-olds. Either ban children from social media or ban social media. One has to give. You can't have all these kids on there getting groomed into mental illnesses that are made up and just making themselves miserable. And as far as freedom goes, TikTok does not have some God-given constitutional right to teach children the blackout challenge. What's that one? That's where people would like to like strangle themselves, themselves and yeah. end up dying. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty fucking... <laughs> that's pretty fucking cool. Oh, we should promote TikTok. Well, then what about video games? Because that develops mental illness as well in kids. Does it? Should kids have no access to video games? Yeah, of course. I... Any online game, Does 100%. It? 100%? What? Yeah. Yeah, if you say yeah, online, online games, games, then you're just talking about addiction. Yes, I think that's unhealthy as well. But online games, like the main character in Resident Evil 4 doesn't turn around and tell you to choke yourself for fun or tell you that, hey, don't talk to your parents. DM me, I'm your parent now. That sort of shit. Or give them DID. It's 
there needs to be a way for us to keep children off of social media. Yes, I don't think that's yeah, it's called freedom. better we parents. We don't let children have. Yeah, but it's not just bad parents. We don't allow children to drink alcohol or drive cars or shoot guns, right? Sure, they will always find a way around it, but nonetheless, we have some basic laws in place to at least help keep children from that. From what if themselves. we the same should be true of social media? What if we regulate bad parenting? What if we put it into law that you can't be a bad parent? That'd be a solution. Jackson, I, I guess think you just found the cure to the every problem ever. <laughs> yeah. I've solved it. <laughs> the government will already take your children away if you abuse them, but this is a kind of quote-unquote abuse that is it's just difficult to prove. Like, how do you legislate, hey, this guy lets his daughter, his like 12-year-old on uh, TikTok 12 hours a day? I think most parents don't That's know my issue with it. don't know the extent of the dangers on like social media and TikTok. Well, I they think, just don't care. I no, I feel like if they did or know, they, they would care. care. It is right. It, it is still you do. Parents just give their kids an iPad. It's yeah, so fucking 100%. creepy. That's what I mean. Like, just little children just pair bonds with an iPad now. Yeah, but like and that's that, the that, issue at heart here. That's what I'm saying. They wouldn't give them the iPad if they knew that. There were challenges going around promoting uh, children choking themselves out or, or shit like that, uh, or how common and pervasive it was. I, I feel like if they knew of the dangers of TikTok or social media, then they might take more of an interest in preventing that. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I would at this point, I would even settle for like a you know the cigarette box type disclaimer, like, hey, this website will give you fucking cancer of the brain <laughs> beware before you let your children on this fucking thing you should search your children's phones to make sure that they're not doing the fucking blackout challenge and upvoting this garbage i don't know i mean there's that and specifically with tiktok obviously it is a chinese spy app that's i don't think the strongest thing to, to uh, argument to make if you want to ban it because all social media is basically just a spy app yeah this one in particular is probably not good that it's owned by a hostile government but well, yeah, that's I mean, that's what, what I would think, that, that, right? Like, like if you're using it, that's if you if you delete if you delete, I think it would be best to ban TikTok and like let an American company um make an alternate that people can use in America, uh, like Vine or something like that. I think like that, that is that. their. I I think that was their solution. That's their only contention. I think the only reason the American government is even bothering with this is because they're butthurt that it's the Chinese grooming the kids and not them. They're just mad that they don't own TikTok, which is why the ultimatum is, hey, either sell this to us and we own it or we ban it. I don't think anything is going to happen. I think it's fucking ridiculous that like the discussion is about whether government employees should be able to have TikTok on their phones. How is this not regulated? How are government employees just allowed to download anything they want onto their phones in the first place? It's so fucking ridiculous. So you went you went to like a TikTok lot of places a, there, but to just back up what you're saying where it's kind of more of an attack on China, that part I will agree for this whole hearing, because at a certain point, they've blatantly asked the CEO, um, are the Chinese government still oppressing the Uyghur population? And the CEO just says, I'm only here to talk about TikTok, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> well, that, that was the other thing, there were some good questions asked. So, okay, it is obviously just for showmanship to ask him about Uyghur Muslims. I mean, what the fuck is he supposed to say? Even if he was a completely innocent man and completely well at heart, he can't give you an honest answer because he doesn't want his fucking family to disappear in China, right? Yeah. He's also, um, well, he's not even guy, Chinese. Though. He's Singaporean. Well, whatever it is, bite dance at the end of the day is Chinese and they'll, they'll fucking get, go after Yeah, him but, but that's that's just still the funny thing where asking him about that kind of stuff is just attacking the wrong target, but it's all a grandstand for them to say, look, China's not getting one up on us. No, we're ahead of it. it just it, That's what I'm saying, though. They scream at these CEOs just for the cameras. One instance, though, one um, outlier was a guy, I forget his name, some congressman I've never heard of, he asked a very apt question, an appropriate question, and everybody fucking started dunking on him. He asked, um, does it was TikTok a, connect it's to Wi-Fi? Be Wi-Fi. Does it yeah. Which was, he wasn't asked, like, okay, when you're dur during a congressional hearing, you're trying to get things on the record. So yes, you have to ask the brain-dead questions like, does TikTok use internet? 
just for the sake of getting the yes, that's it. But he asked something important at the end. He asked, does TikTok connect to other devices on my Wi-Fi, on the home network? And everyone ran with this, just making fun of my fucking boomer. Congress is just, they need tech support. He doesn't even know that TikTok connects to Wi-Fi. Ha 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 Like, bro, uh, Wi-Fi isn't just a connection to the internet. All of your home devices are on your home Wi-Fi network. And they can talk to each other. This is an actually important question. Does TikTok attempt to communicate with other devices in your home? That's what your, say, phone does when you open the Roomba app. And, and it's also what every de- it's what every device does. So, for example, if you're on YouTube and you want to cast it to your TV, it has to interact with the other things on the network to do that. It, the question is still is dog shit. The way, the, the way he asked that it question is, is still dog shit. Like, no matter how you spin it, this is a guy who was very ill-equipped to ask It's not a spin. I'm just questions. saying it wasn't a ridiculous question. You have to get that on the record. You want him to admit, yes, we do connect to your home Wi-Fi and does it connect to other devices because why does TikTok exactly need to connect to anything? What is the purpose? And the reason I'm saying that it was a good question is because the CEO gave a weasel answer. He said, I don't think so. Plausible deniability, but I'll get back to you on that. So a non-answer. Why was the answer not a casual yes or no? That's why, why you grill these people. That's the whole point. It was like the one congressman who was actually, I guess, doing his job and people gave him shit for it and called him a boomer. This is where I thought you and Charlie were going to disagree since I I could see you have differing, differing opinions on it. Yeah, I, I think that That's whole okay. Congress hearing was fucking painful. Among every question asked, the vast majority of them were completely misguided leading questions that got absolutely no answers to anything important at all, especially the Florida congresswoman who just kept saying yes, 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 anytime she asked a question to him. I thought that whole thing was a what? fucking sham. <laughs> I'd say that. I mean, yeah, these people aren't exactly. They're just, again, I'm telling you, the problem is that all of these people only look at this like a personality cult thing. They just want to go viral. That's it. I'm going to ask a fucking pressing question and I'm going to go viral on Twitter. I'm going to ask him about the Uyghur Muslims. Epic yeah. dunk. It's like, okay, yeah. can you actually do something about this being on government phones though? Like, you know, TikTok is a literal keylogger. When you use the, a German actually made himself useful for once. A German security researcher found uh, that TikTok, for instance, injects code into their built-in browser, which is the only browser you're permitted to use when you open TikTok, by the way. So when you click a link in a TikTok, and it opens something, and you type in your credit card number, say, that that is recorded. And TikTok said this is for technical support purposes. Uh, and you have this on government phones. Yeah, that's it's fucking yeah. insane. <laughs> There's no. That's the. Uh, that's where I completely feel it should be outright banned. There's not a single good argument for why a political person needs to have TikTok to dance for kids online. Like that makes no sense. It's just a security risk for no reason for someone in power. I just completely disagree that it should be a nationwide ban. Just taking down the whole app because it's, uh, you know, uh, dangerous for kids' mental health. Would you... Just ban kids somehow. Well, I I was going to say, would you... Perhaps a solution uh, could be a TikTok kids, like a YouTube kids counterpart. (laughs) where It's it's like a walled garden. Uh, Kids are only allowed on this TikTok kids. It's like highly curated content or whatever. Uh, like a lot of guidelines and rules and then there's like tiktok tiktok becomes tiktok like after dark basically for adults and stuff and you have to you have to provide identification of some kind or something to be allowed to use it yeah i don't know what the solution is Uh, i just don't think kids should be on social media in general but there's really no way of stopping that without just banning the social media itself for everyone and i don't like that idea of banning shit because uh, uh it's dangerous for kids and kids alone I mean, I, I, I don't have I don't the solution. Also ban like I'm against banning like tobacco or alcohol or guns and shit because of kids, but we do ban children from those things. Is my point? Yeah. So if if they and could find a way to ban kids from children. TikTok, yeah, if you could find a way to ban kids from TikTok, yeah, I'd I'm be all for that it. as well. Hundred yeah. percent. The best arguments to make that children should never ever be permitted on TikTok is the fact that TikTok is banned in China. Chinese TikTok does not have the same content as American TikTok. For the rest of it's the education. world, they have their own version of it that has their own specific name, their own specific version that is highly filtered. Children on in China get a TikTok where you know it's like math videos. Children in America get TikTok where they are told to ingest poisonous materials that they can find in their household. 
it is, it is hard to make an argument that this isn't some sort of psyop by China, and I don't care how some weasel Chinese spy who's trained in, you know, pussyfooting around the truth says in Congress. The, that thing needs to go. I don't, yeah, but Charlie's right. I don't know. It's, like, what's, it's really hard to find an actual solution that prevents children from using it without, like, actually demanding he's not identification Chinese. from I didn't say he's... adults. Notice, I did not say that he is Chinese. I said he is a Chinese spy. I do not believe, you will not convince me that China would just hand the reins to a man who's not on their payroll. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and as predictable as it was, they just called the whole hearing racist, by the way. They just said, you guys are racist against the Chinese. This is xenophobic. Sure. I didn't I didn't know that TikTok in China was an educational tool. There's no, like, <laughs> dancing competitions on TikTok or, like, uh, celebrity viral shit on TikTok version. over there. Yeah. What's it? Is it called TikTok? So, it's something with a D. I forget what the name is. Do you know? Yeah, Charlie? that's that's interesting. I don't remember. So, are they? Is each version run by like a different company? Uh, how to get Chinese TikTok on Android? Chinese version of TikTok gets time limit for kids, bans nighttime use. The Chinese know it's called Douyin. Yeah, that's pretty interesting and to me. And the children are limited to 40 minutes a day. <laughs> By the way, TikTok was saying that they're also introducing this to um, Western TikTok now, the time limit for children, saying, yeah, we're going to have um, you know, like a curfew for kids. But it's literally just a pop-up that says, hey, do you want to continue browsing? And the kid is just going <laughs> to say yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, actually, I've reached my quota thing. for today. I'm yeah, going to clock in. I think I'm <laughs> yeah. done. I think you've reminded me. Would you, would you like to... Would you like to continue doing this drug? It's literally just a, hey, we're not culpable anymore. We we ask them if they'd like to stop. They consented to continue. Not our fault your children are doing this. That's all it is. Yeah. All right. Hey, that shit. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty fucking stupid. Andrew, you haven't you know spoken it's in a while. not stupid. <laughs> Next Evo oh. and me, because I'm talking about Next Evo. Next Evo, what comes to mind when I say that name? Is it going to be the benefits of CBD? Well, you're goddamn right it is, because as the most cl clinically studied CBD brand on the market, Next Evo will take their research to the next level. CBD can help you manage your stress, maybe help you if you've got trouble sleeping. And Next Evo is going to make sure that it's helping you and your body by being a better absorbing CBD material that is fast acting. CBD has a lot of a lot of talk, a lot of hubbub around it. And while things aren't concretely proven, I can't just go up in your face and say, hey, it will do this. There are a lot of people left and right all around corners of the Internet who say that it helps them with all sorts of day to day little things here and there. I personally in the past used to suffer from very bad migraines and found that cannabis style products such as CBD helped me immensely. And Next Evo is going to make sure you're getting the right thing for whatever job you want to try it out with. They test their product multiple different times to ensure you get 100% of what's on their label. They only use Smart Sorb CBD, which is proven to have 30 times better absorption in the first 30 minutes than the overall regular stuff. And they also will do the research via four clinical trials. No other CBD brand is going to come close to that level of dedication. If you want to check out Next Evo, see if maybe it's the product for you and whatever thing you've got going on that you'd want to try helping it out with, you can upgrade your CBD and go to nextevo.com official to get 20% off your first order of $40 or more. That's 20% off $40 or more at nextevo.com slash official. And now that you are a super powered superhuman, with a new regimented routine, you can increase your workout routine with FitBod. We are yes. three months, three months into March. And I'm just going to tell it to you plainly out there, folks. If your fat ass hasn't started working out yet, you probably won't. But it's not too late. Now that I'm saying this to you, now that I'm bringing this truth to you, 
just take a moment and realize, you know, I could just get started with FitBod. I could start moving. My New Year's resolution, yeah, I missed it, but I can work out at any time and FitBod is the place to start. My favorite thing about FitBod is that you can replace workouts you don't feel like doing with other similar workouts. Very nice to have a flexible routine when you're just kind of bored or something or you hurt yourself or you don't want to do a specific exercise or you don't have the same amount of time, etc, etc, etc. Does not matter. The point that it right on your phone will show you your workout routine and let you customize it to your will is huge. Speaking of customizing, you can customize it to how much weight you want to lose or muscle you want to build, as well as whatever equipment you happen to have wherever you're working out. Don't get lazy. Don't get complacent. Let FitBod figure out everything you can do to stay fit. Keep up in your fitness habit with a personalized workout program from FitBod. Go to fitbod.me slash official to get the app for free and a 25% off of your subscription offer. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash official for 25% off of your subscription or to just try the app for free. Nice. Thank you, Fitbod. And next Evo. Hey. Yeah. Have you guys kept up with the Internet Archive stuff? Uh, they ruled that they can't, like, publish full works or something anymore, right? Um, kinda, yeah. Um, not exactly. So, the way a traditional library works, you can hand out books that they have bought. They can, I mean. The Internet Archive, however, would buy physical books, digitize them, and lend out the dig digital copies um, without any sort of deal with the publishers. And during COVID, they also removed the one book per person limit, meaning they were literally just creating digital copies of physical books and lending them out to like thousands of people at a time. So basically just literal piracy. And that's how the court ruled and just told them no. Um, I expected you guys to know more, but we can skip the topic if it's boring. Um, oh, is there something fun about what it? What else we got? No, I just thought it's interesting. I don't know. I follow these things. I like yeah. piracy. Allegedly. Yeah, that's that seems like more piracy than just <laughs> archiving, archiving stuff, right? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, they they had no technical ground to stand on. Ethical, perhaps. I don't like the Internet Archive because they're just politically compromised. But sharing books wasn't something that I would get angry at. And I only even know about this because one of the lol cows I follow, Patrick Tomlinson, was oinking about this on Twitter very angrily. <laughs> Patrick. Um, yeah, fair enough. I've been seeing a lot of videos, this is completely different, but I've been seeing a lot of videos from, like, festivals and music concerts of guys with their girlfriend, and their girlfriend leaves them basically right in front of them, like, dancing with, like, singers and stuff like that. I just sort of... Are, you, are my... you talking about the one where the girl goes on stage and... So, like Drake or someone is like lap dancing on her or that's, something. That was another and one. Then... That's not the one I was thinking of. I just found another one just before the podcast recorded. Uh, start. We started recording the podcast. I was just scrolling through my feet, and it's not even like an actual singer. It's like someone on the street corner, like a busker, like singing on top of like a, a like I don't know, like a fire hydrant style thing. And the girl hops up and starts like grinding on him while he's while her boyfriend's there like shrugging his shoulders, basically like, "What the fuck do I do?" He was so what? he was so angry. <laughs> leave. Yes, leave. You <laughs> found out what kind of leave, girlfriend leave her, you had. Leave him with. Leave her with him. Yeah, it's not your girlfriend anymore. <laughs> I <laughs> read a. Um, <laughs> it's like a nightmare I got, scenario. <laughs> I got past a really amusing story related to that that was on Reddit. It was uh, it was one of those subreddits where it's like, oh, I regret this. I think uh, today I fucked up or one of those. But the guy was like, I was talking with my girlfriend, and we were discussing, you know, celebrities that we would fuck if given the opportunity. Ha ha, fun stuff. And I was like, oh, I'd fuck. Uh, uh, the girl from Harry Potter, what's her name? Emma, Wa Emma Watson. Emma Watson. He's like, I do Emma Watson. And she named a singer in a band. And he's like, well, funny story. We went to see them in concert a few days ago. Oh, man. And she went backstage <laughs> and told me that she fucked him. And he's like, how could you do this to me? And she's like, I thought we were discussing it'd be okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The, weirdest, yeah. the celebrity pass thing is the weirdest yeah. shit to me. Yeah, it's super weird. 
Like, how is that not still cheating? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, how are you sitting there as a man and just listening, like, to your wife or someone to uh, describing how she would totally suck off Jason Statham? Like, oh, yeah, mm, tell me more. Well, who uh, would? How would you fuck him? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, he's a celebrity, so it's okay. <laughs> fuck you. Get out of my house, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that is so weird that is insane that that girl actually went to the concert and fucked him <laughs> like what are the odds i know yeah, true she she made her dreams a reality that's a go-getter was it like shortly after the conversation i don't remember i read this a couple days ago but all i know is he was like i can't believe she actually did that i and she thought i was completely serious when we were talking celebrity passes Oh man, that's so oh, yeah. great. She was honest about it and didn't cheat behind his back, I guess. Well, <laughs> so did he just take it lying down? <laughs> that's probably like Do slightly more concerning, like... right? Like she actually thought it was serious or there was a actual deal that they had made. <laughs> <laughs> Like, how do you solve that at that point? <laughs> yeah, what what do you do in that scenario? You just leave. What do you mean? Yeah. Well, so no, yeah. like the only solution is to go fuck your whole past. <laughs> That's not gonna he happen. He has to track down Emma Watson. <laughs> yeah, go fuck yeah. Emma Watson. <laughs> Good luck. Make it even, I guess. <laughs> That's smart of her that she picked someone attainable. Oh yeah, my celebrity <laughs> pass. Um, that guy on and that band we're going to see next month. <laughs> That cashier at the local Walmart. I he's what great. a coincidence! My my celebrity past is my ex boyfriend. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Isn't it amazing how you could just name literally anyone, but it's only okay when they have like one million followers on. Yeah. Twitter. At what point? At what point does it become okay? Like, at what point does a ce like celebrity uh, status actually kick in and become okay to fuck I think... in those whole passes? I think it would only be okay if the celebrity is not desirable in, t in general or or just so like not expected like if if I was dating a girl and she said my celebrity pass is Barack Obama and then I found out she fucked Obama I'd be like you know I uh, okay <laughs> yeah uh, uh, sure that's <laughs> you'd be more oh, okay. impressed than her like, did, yeah. I, would, I, would, I would be more sure. impressed you be okay with that well, I'd be more impressed than, like, destroyed, you know? Because, like, if it's a conventionally attractive man or or something of that nature, I'd be like, oh my god, how could this happen? Like, of course, because he's super attractive. But if it's someone who's just, like, just a celebrity, not really known for being attractive, and it just happened, I'd be kind of like, wow, huh? Uh, Obama. That's... Huh. Why was Obama Weird. the one that you went to? But I think Obama is, like, kind of if he's attractive. He's ugly. Yeah. All right. Let's say let's yeah, say Bill he's, Gates. He's like How about Bill looking. Gates? I was gonna say like Danny DeVito. Yeah, would yeah, you be upset be if your girlfriend fucked Danny DeVito? <laughs> if that was the whole boss? I'd be more impressed. Ew. Yeah, I'd be more impressed because I'd be like, wow, Danny DeVito like that. You like him that mean? much? Huh? Like uh. you hate me so much, you cheated with an ugly dude. <laughs> oh, that's that the negative way of looking at it. <laughs> I like to be optimistic, Kyle. There's, a, there's no positive way of looking at getting cheated on. <laughs> there's no upside. I mean, at least you get, a cool, you get a cool story yeah. out of that case, yeah. though. Like, my, my ex fucked Barack Obama while we were together. Yeah. It's like, whoa. See, it's like, crazy. yeah, it would, it would suck and the relationship would be over, but, like, once you move on, you'd be like, I can't believe she fucked Obama. Like, wow. Well, if your girlfriend fucks Obama, that's the kind of shit that you can make a career out of. You can become the guy that his girlfriend fucked oh, Barack yeah. Obama. by Obama. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd release, thing. I'd release like a that. music video called, like, Cucked by Obama, and it'd be yeah. perfect. You could absolutely, like, uh, capitalize on that. Embrace it. Yeah. Will Smith as the background singer. Huh. <laughs> you could potentially even blackmail a former president, which would be pretty cool. Ooh. Right? God, you could come up with so many cool, like, book spinoffs, too, like the State of the Punion address <laughs> where you talk about your girl having sex with Obama while you're together or something. See, you, you could have get so it. much. Yeah. yeah. The real that, first that's a, lady. Yeah, you could, you could have a lot out of that. You, okay. you could have a whole career out of that. So... Uh, all right, so she fucks Obama. That doesn't hurt you, Andrew. You, you, you're more impressed than it uh, than it would hurt you. Now, what if uh, Barack Obama divorces Michelle Obama and starts dating your ex girlfriend that just you know blew up your relationship? Would you then be hurt since she like took a I, massive upgrade technically? I would be jealous. Obama didn't want to date me instead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
No, but I feel I feel like if your girlfriend like upgrades that much after a breakup, it's gonna hurt as well. Yeah, so I I would obviously be hurt. Like it's not just one emotion. Obviously, it would hurt and feel like a betrayal and devastation. But I think the primary thing I would think the whole time is it would just be like impressive shock. It, I would just be sitting there all the time going, "Oh my God, Obama! Like like the <laughs> Obama, really? Like wh huh?" I mean, cool? that's kind of cool. I, I, it's yeah. kind of cool that you're like tied to Obama now. You're like pussy brothers, basically. Exactly. It's just so. Ew. It's just so <laughs> specifically out of nowhere that I don't think the feeling of oh my god, it was with Barack Obama would ever leave my mind. Yeah. Now, what if it was Bill Clinton? Would you be more impressed or less? Well, impressed? that would make more sense. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, yeah, everyone's fucked Bill Clinton. Also, I would be, because Bill Clinton's, what, like 80-something years old now? Yeah. He's in a wheelchair, isn't he? I think so. He's super, like, he's 76. He's super decrepit the last time I saw him. Since we're talking about presidents, uh, I, I want to briefly mention this, because this still blows my mind. Yesterday, I don't know if you guys saw, Biden did, like, a, a address, like, a, a hearing following the school shooting. Did you guys see how he started that? Didn't he talk about ice cream or something? <laughs> yes, he did a like stand-up comedy routine. So in this address, like following the school shooting, he opens it by saying, Hey, I'm Joe Biden, husband of Dr. Jill Biden. As the crowd is cheering and clapping and laughing, and he goes, I really like ice cream. I came down here because I heard they were serving <laughs> ice cream. And then he like he just goes on He goes on about this fucking ice least cream. He remembered and, her name. <laughs> so he's, he's talking about ice cream, and then he goes to the podium, and he's like, Oh my god, whose kids are those? These are such good-looking kids! Stand up, kids! Hey, can we clap for these kids? And these four random kids just stand up, and he's like, Are these all your kids? Oh my god, you should be so proud. All, like, proceeding, talking about a fucking school shooting. Biden's gaffes are my favorite. It's, like, reminiscent of... You guys remember the Bush years where he would say things like... He wants peace with the fish people and shit like that. <laughs> That's the my favorite. Know what the left hand does or something yeah, like that. Good old it's like Saddam Biden does Hussein. the same thing. It's like when Biden said that um poor children are just as smart as white children. It was like oof, Biden. What are you saying? <laughs> oh my god, he is, he's fucking up what your yeah. what your speechwriter wrote, buddy. You want to read that again? <laughs> so what's it's so, so fucking? So what, what's but, telling on that is Biden is currently eighty years old. He is older than yeah. every other president we have now. Like, like it, fucking. Stop electing senile men. Think, about, think about this. Yeah, think about this for a second. Clinton is seventy six now. He was president <laughs> like over twenty years ago. Obama is sixty one, and Donald Trump the currently is seventy six. Meaning that he the was president in his, is, in his late 60s. Biden started being president when he was pretty much 80 years old. He's already yeah. decrepit. He's, he's already, already a skeleton senile. collecting Grandpa. dust. He is so senile. It, another clip where he says, like, America can be defined in one word. I haven't been gone. <laughs> it's like, watch this man. And the sad part is, when you, like, the really depressing thing to me is when you see clips of them younger. Like a young Trump or a young uh, Biden, and you they're like articulate. And you go, oh, fuck, this is what this person used to be. And now they're literally senile. Like, this is not the same person. This man withered. Of course withered. they're senile. He is they're now... 80. So yeah, of course they're senile. It's not even his fault. It's like, no. yeah, of course, you shouldn't be fucking electing octogenarians. And this is why there needs to just be an upper limit. I get that yeah. the youngest you can be elected yeah. president is like 35. Make it like 65. The oldest yeah, you should, can be. There, 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 the should fucking definitely be limit. there should definitely be an age limit because there is a huge 100%. difference between 70 and 80 years old in terms of mental faculties and physical ability. Like, they're both old. But a 70-year-old versus an 80-year-old is, that's just when things really start compounding, when there's a big difference. Are, are Even a president in their 70s is too. like, it's... that's too much. No, not opinion. Trump. Any any unspecified 70-year-old is going to be far more capable than any unspecified 80-year-old. That decade matters a lot. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it, it's still too old. Like, 80 is just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And do you think ridiculous. he still has, like, another term in him? No. He doesn't even... He forgets that he is president. 
half the time. He refers to everyone else as the president. He still thinks sometimes during the speeches he'll refer to President Obama. <laughs> he'll call his wife, Jill Biden, the president. He'll refer to his running mate, Kamala Harris, as the current president. He literally forgets that he is president. God. And that who fucking, isn't? That fucking video of America being, can be defined in a single word is an absolute fucking classic. Yeah. So <laughs> here, here, let me play can that. be defined in a single word and he starts scatting. He wasn't wrong there. Let, let's enjoy this together. Here. This America is, this is, is a nation also a that recent... can be defined in a single word. I can put him... Uh, put, what? <laughs> America can be defined in one word. Himalayan Xi Jinping. What? <laughs> this man is, so has funny, his finger on the fucking nuclear button. Funny fact too. This is this is a more recent trend in history. Yeah. Probably about the first half of presidents were ages like. 48 to about early 60s when they started being president, mostly hovering around 55. But in recent years, the president has been at these are these are the last, let's say, let's say six presidents, six or seven presidents when they started their age, 78, 70, 47, which was Obama, 54, 46, 64, and then 69 with Ronald Reagan. In the last, uh, like, 40 years, it's just been old dudes. I wonder why that is. Uh, people because value experience. Because these people experience. have ego. They cannot let go. They cannot let go. This is why you get Bush, Bush, Clinton, Clinton, Obama, Obama, and Biden, Biden as, like, presidents. It's these fucking people cannot let go of power. That's why Hillary Clinton is still, this like, talking about running. Even though she lost resoundly many times. It's like, they just cannot let it go. It's the ego. Yeah, they want yeah, power so but bad that, that they that cling onto it when they're still ninety. That doesn't explain why people are like voting for the old people there. It'll vote for fucking anyone as long as it's quote unquote their guy. People will vote for fucking Biden in his deathbed if they need to because he's not Trump, and people will vote for fucking Trump even if he's in the grave, like six foot under. They would vote for him still, just as a fuck you to the Biden people. And it's ridiculous. It's not, and people think, oh, you're making political or. This is political talk, whatever the fuck. It's not even political. It's just ridiculous. Like, it's not a thing it's against Democrats in this instance, for for example. Like, like, fucking get Obama back. Put someone else in that seat. It's just, it's insane. And you can talk about how, whatever, like, the presidents don't really have power and the deep state runs it all and he's just a puppet and yada yada. But I enjoy those talks, as you might imagine. But still, still, you can't have a fucking literal senile moron represents you <laughs> that's just embarrassing <laughs> to every other nation that's watching the, i'm just I'm, I'm really kind of like in my head going through the joe biden best of collection now that's what i call biden like volume 15 <laughs> do you guys remember when uh he was doing his speech and he's like man i just love when I'm in a pool, and my my hair standing up on my legs, and the kids I, come I on that. and rub my rub my leg hair. I remember that. One. <laughs> a fond memory. He, he was talking about like how children would rub his leg hair or something and enjoy it, and he would enjoy getting rubbed by children. Like, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck are you drifting off into right now? Then there are the moments where he just wanders off, and he forgets where he is, and he asks he has to like stop and be like, "Where do I go?" And like one of his handlers has to come up and literally hold him by the hands and tell him where to go. It's so fucking insane. Yeah, I love, I love when he just walks <laughs> off during a speech. He doesn't just like up into the distance. Like there goes grandpa again. What are you looking for? Your pudding cup? <laughs> so God, his fucking speeches are crazy. Oh this, man, this ice cream shit though. That is that is wacky. He did a stand up routine before this like yep. tragic speech. Yep. He did a actual stand-up routine right before talking about the mass shooting. So I, yeah. I got another fun quote Here's from what him. I uh, someone was criticizing him, and his response was, I may be Irish, but I'm not stupid, which just directly <laughs> insinuates all the Irish are stupid. He's, is, is he even is he he Irish? He might not he even, I think he is, but who like, knows? Yeah, he's, no. his family is Irish I think the quote was I may be white but I'm not stupid not Irish. no I found the quote it's I may be Irish but I'm not stupid oh, fuck Jesus Christ <laughs> <It's so goofy. laughs> 
Oh, he's America such a wacky now boy. I was just thinking of one I forgot. Oh, there's the one where like some guy at a town hall or something asks him a pressing question and he goes, listen here, fat. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh man. Aaron, Aaron references that all the time at the warehouse when we when the uh, Joe Biden um Trump Overwatch AI was big. He Aaron would start all of his shit posts with, "Hey fat, I'm playing Overwatch. Hey fat, can, can you leave me alone, fat? I'm trying to heal on mercy." During the uh first during Sorry. the first presidential campaign with Barack Obama, so during Obama's campaigning, Joe Biden once introduced him as a man I'm proud to call my friend, a man who will be the next president of the United States, Barack America. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was that was during uh, but that was during Obama's like uh... yeah, during Barack Obama's presidential campaigning back in 2008, he introduced him as Barack America. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's like his wrestling name. Yeah, maybe that's like his, uh, his ego, like an alter ego. I'm just on a site now reading his quotes. There's so many awesome. goofy ones. By the way, what I, what I think happened with the ice cream stand-up bit is uh, uh, Biden made a joke in an earlier speech where he called himself old. He said something like, I've been doing this job for hundreds of years now. Ha ha ha. And he got a laugh. And it was one. it was literally the only time for like a brief moment of five seconds where he was likable because it was self-effacing and I think he just realized oh shit I can get a laugh out of people if I have a sense of humor and I do a comedy <laughs> skit or a joke <laughs> yeah, maybe just like a different school conference. Conference. <laughs> yeah yeah, Post school shooting might time. not be the best time <laughs> yeah it, to debut your standout routine probably not you, you, you know 100% he was off script on that. The second he mentioned ice cream, I bet his whole handlers and staff had a fucking heart attack. Like, oh shit, you know for he's a fact, not rogue. Well, the you ice cream routine. He, for, he <laughs> forgot why he was there. Let's yeah. be honest, he just forgot. He forgot that a school shooting 100%. happened. He was probably just in crowd-pleasing mode. I got shit. <laughs> How about that ice cream, the guys? script and say school shooting, basically, like, as the header. <laughs> <laughs> Freak the fuck out. But that's, so, it's not even as. Oh, God. You, you've got to watch the clip because it's like the underneath it, it says Biden addresses like Nashville school shooting. And then he comes out, Mike and Hanny's like, fucking ice cream. <laughs> you get, I came down here for some ice cream. <laughs> Charlie, make the I best chocolate the, chip ice cream in the fucking state here. Charlie, I found a very motivational quote from Joe Biden if you'd like to hear it. Yeah, yes. please. All right, please, here it comes. This is, a, this is a direct quote from Joe Biden. The best way to get something done, if you if you hold it near and dear to you, that you uh, um, <laughs> like to be able to. Uh, anyway, I'm I'm ready to get a lot done. <laughs> that, Good that save. Is motivation. Yeah. That should go on a fortune cookie. <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to make a book of just motivational Biden quotes. <laughs> By the way, here's the, uh, I found the clip of the ice cream thing. So keep in mind, this is we're recording on, what was it, today, Tuesday? Yeah. Um, <laughs> shooting happened yesterday, I think. Six people died, three of whom were nine-year-olds. This is Another Biden's, tragic uh, shooting in remarks. America, yeah. My name is Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm Dr. Joe Biden's husband. <laughs> and I ate Jenny's ice cream, chocolate chip. Oh, yeah. I came down because I heard there was chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> By the way, I have a whole refrigerator full upstairs. Ew. I think I'm kidding. I'm not. God. Ben, how are you, pal? One of the best guys in the United States Congress, Ben Cardin. Like, it's actually treated like the like Keenan and Kel show with people clapping yeah. and, like, laughing during every moment. They love him. You can't even blame him for, like, the ice cream joke. The reporters, literally the toughest question that Joe Biden has ever been asked by a reporter was, what's your favorite kind of ice cream? Remember that whole fucking drama? Because everybody no. was mad at the journalists. Like, this is what you ask? You ask him what his ice cream is? And so he makes these fucking Wait, jokes. Wait, so this is us. a running, like, this is a running theme with Biden? He's constantly talking about ice cream? I guess. Yeah, I guess. I, I have no idea. He sounds so fucking creepy too, doesn't he? Like a horror movie character. I have my scream. Of What's sir. the? You don't believe me? I have my scream. <laughs> do you do you guys know the context of? Apparently, he told a story about a man named Corn Pop. <laughs> what the fuck? 
apparently uh, at some point he familiar. told her he told a story about a guy named corn pop and this is a quote from it corn pop was a bad dude and he ran a bunch of bad boys and it's it's like this nonsensical yeah. ramble about i don't know him fighting a man named corn pop oh. i guess i play a clip but it's literally 15 minutes long about him talking <laughs> about corn pop the fact that he can talk for 15 That's minutes thing. about a man named corn shit. pop he literally just invents stories about like places he's never been and timelines that don't exist. Fuck it's that that yeah, one yesterday funny, though. To laugh at I, I, guests. I saw it on Twitter from accounts that are like, I can't believe Joe Biden said this after the school shooting, and I was like, Oh, this is definitely AI generated. So I had to like look it up because they were like, No, this is real, and I just didn't believe anyone. And it turns out, yep, hundred percent. He started that conference with a fucking stand up comedy routine with people like uproariously laughing and cheering him on as he fucking That's rants even, about ice cream. Yeah. And that's the really offensive part about it. It's not even this fucking geezer, the senile man just drifting off because he forgot why the fuck he's there. It's like a room full of journalists. Yeah, going, ah, laughing. Mr. President, you're the best. Ha 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 ha. Who oh children? Ah, ha, 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 ha. Ice cream. Fuck you. Yeah, if my what a if, bunch of bootlicking bitches. If, if my child died in a tragic shooting and the, the fucking president came out on stage and I was looking for some level of comfort or something and he started joking about ice cream I, I would be oh, furious would just about radicalize me yeah. <laughs> I mean not only was he joking about ice cream he said the only reason he was there was for the yeah. ice cream he's like oh so you don't care I about the shooting you, just, you want a chocolate chip ice cream okay interesting Fucking oh you know wild, what I just man. remembered the cringiest thing the cringiest part of the um Biden timeline was something that the chat just brought up, brought up. Dark Brandon. Remember how they gave him laser eyes and they is. tried their best to meme him into being cool? This geezer, I still don't this understand like what Dark Brandon is. I say it all man. the time. What, what, what no, was what Dark Brandon? They literally just take Biden's photo, they add the laser eyes, right? So you guys know how like the Bitcoin people put, give themselves laser eyes in their profile yeah, photos yeah, yeah. on Twitter? They did that to Biden and they called him Dark Brandon. And Dark Brandon is badass because he just passes legislation without anyone voting on it. He just does what he wants. He's Dark Brandon. He's our cool guy. And they tried to like kind of ironically, not ironically, meme this into being a thing and it just it didn't work because it's fucking Biden. And he's not cool. He doesn't know his own name half the time. <laughs> Well, that's what kind of makes so the Dark Brandon thing funny to me, is if he thinks he's Dark <laughs> Brandon, that would be funny. If Maybe in his he... next conference he'll come out in like a cape and a shield or something and be like, hey, I'm Dark Brandon, the ice cream Avenger. <laughs> it's not him though, it's, it's, it is the exact kind of people who are sitting in that room and laughing at his ice cream jokes after a bunch of children just got fucking buried. It's them. Memeing this, like, haha, Dark Brandon came in after his school shooting and joked about ice cream, Dark Brandon rules. Like, just dumbest fucking yeah. people. It's so fucking, yeah. That is awful. Yeah, that one had me fucking scratching fucking my fucking. head. I'll tell you what. <laughs> All right, and now we're um, gonna get a redo. He's, yeah. What redo with what? He's coming back out to talk about ice cream encore. <laughs> the audience was that wild. No, I mean, I mean, we're gonna get an election with him and presumably Trump, right? Again, two fucking geezers, and people think Trump is all there. The man who's like, yeah, he's kind of, he's more lucid than Biden. I'll give you that, but he's also that's like the Insane. Adderall. That's not him. That's not him being young and spry. That's just drugs that he's taking. And yeah, we you know, kind this of... man who's like boom, boomer posting on Truth Social in all caps, having his meltdown. We have skyrocketed so past, like, the stereotypical, like, noble, well-put-together president. You know, like, the, the JFKs or the... I don't know any other presidents, really. <laughs> Just JFK. <laughs> we, have, we have left we, JFK we, behind in the dust. Well, not, not by choice. He was taken from us, Jackson. Oh, yeah, yeah. By Doc Brandon, perhaps. Tired <laughs> <Yeah>. of <laughs> 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 Yeah, uh, I will so say as an dumb. Australian, I mean, yes, like American politics affects the entire world, so it sucks regardless. But like, as an Australian with no like force in the race per se, I am kind of excited to see like uh, Biden versus Trump debates again, especially if it comes down to ice cream. I am all for that. Well, it is I mean, okay. It is funny. That's Trump at his best. That's when he's entertaining. Well, like you know how people, even Trump haters, admits that yeah, okay, he was kind of funny on Twitter. Like you know that's kind of an attitude that i get 
Yes, I also want to see him during debates. I don't want to see him in the actual office, though. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to see each of them actually, yeah, in a, you know, executive position. But if they could just get together maybe once a month and do like a for fun debate. With no <laughs> <stakes. Rap battle. laughs> yeah. yeah. For charity. That would be great. I agree. Yeah, I'd be down for that. <laughs> hey, uh, guys, we've, we've made it through the entire podcast. And we said before the episode that we were going to dedicate uh, a bit of a chunk Ooh, at the end. Hang on, I have talking. one more topic I will like to wedge in before the John Wick thing. Okay, okay. May before I? the John Wick thing. Yeah. Yes. We have a voicemail line again. I set one up. This time it is our own. We don't have to molest somebody else's. And there is a reason for it. I've talked about my friend Tori before, who works at an old folks home. This is where I called in over Zoom one time, and one of the old ladies asked me if I'm looking forward to Trump dying of COVID, which made it very, very awkward for me to answer. But, uh, what? So they have oh, an older. <laughs> well, she didn't really ask it like that, but she did ask me what I was thinking about Trump getting COVID because at the time he had COVID. And uh, I was trying to keep it like as non political as possible. So I was just, I gave her some cookie cutter answer like, well, I wouldn't want anybody to die of COVID, of course, blah, blah, blah. Kai, Kai anyway. had to be like a politician, basically. You had to give like non <laughs> yeah, confrontational kinda. responses. <laughs> Gertrude, you know I, I can't, can't get into this. I'm just here to talk about TikTok, <laughs> yeah, Gertrude. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? Like, that would be hilarious. I don't know. I can't be really honest. Anyway, um, Tori has told me that one of the gentlemen, at the old folks home is about to turn 100 and she wanted to get him 100 uh, birthday cards to celebrate and she wasn't sure if she could meet that like all the girls working there they weren't sure if they could do that so i figured we could help so this is what i'm going to mobilize our fans for um so in that regard here's what we're gonna do i'm going to use duck's p.o box because i'm too lazy to set up our own <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to send Doug a bunch of uh, gift cards, dear listener, and he's going to forward them to Tori, and she will give Mr. T, as they call him, the gift cards next month when he turns 100. That P.O. Box is um, P.O. Box 114, 114, Harper, Kansas, and the zip code is 67058. So if you would like to send in some gift, uh, not gift cards, sorry, birthday cards to Mr. T, that would be lovely. Uh, and before should, anybody we should starts, clarify, um, yeah, should we clarify like cards only and only write nice things, and also if someone will read the cards before they're given to the. Doesn't matter. Uh, kind you can send your favorite you, Biden quote for him. That would really cheer him up. <laughs> no, no. Well, he would speak <laughs> the same language. He's a hundred. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you can I send think... whatever you want, but make it nice. Tori will screen yeah. the gift cards, so before you bother to like scribble swastikas and dicks all over the place, yeah. actually, where she don't, won't be don't waste the your energy beforehand. Yeah, don't waste I, your energy. Or also, it's important that we recognize not all hundred year olds are built the same. He might, he's probably all there. I bet he's a very nice man. He probably enjoys when the children touch his blonde leg hairs and bounce in his lap. <laughs> oh God, don't slander him. From what he's I, a man what I could vote for, that's a very sure. nice. He's the next president. He's a very yeah. nice uh, gentleman who used to work in the Coast Guard and then he uh, worked in the shipyard for the Navy. Uh, went to art school. He loves sharing stories, still sketches, and plays rummy cub with his friends. I don't know what that is. That was That's where you cub. touch each other's legs, the like hair uh, in the pool. That's what it's <laughs> oh, called. <God. laughs> no, but for, for real, it, like anyway. he sounds like a nice old man. Be nice. Yes, be nice, please. And if you can't send a card where you're too lazy, you could also call the voicemail and leave him a nice message that Tori then can play for him. That's uh, our number is 404-913-3858. Just call, leave a nice message, and I might also just pull random voicemails from time to time to play on the show if you want to leave any of us a message. If you maybe want to tell us your favorite Biden quote. So yeah, that, that was it. My personal army request of our fans. Was leaving oh, I thought you were going to play a... Nice birthday message. I thought you were going to play a voice. Um, I, mean, uh... I mean, do you want one? No, that's it's fine. Pretty much you you don't have to. I just thought that's what was okay. going to happen. We don't have uh, a specific one. Just thank you for calling in. If you have called in, we did plug it on the Twitter, and it, it's people just saying, "Hey, I love listening to you guys." So thank you. Very sweet. Thank you. Um. All right. 
with that done, uh, John Wick 4. Mm-hmm. So we're mm-hmm. going to talk about John Wick yes. 4 Spoiler. right now. Yeah. Spoilers. Tune out now. So if you, if, you, if you haven't watched John Wick 4 yet, this is the end of the podcast for you guys, uh, probably. <laughs> I'm watching so leave. the number drop on the voice chat right now. <laughs> yeah, leave, leave <laughs> right now. We got people down. left <laughs> in vomiting. Uh, yeah, head out if you, if you haven't seen John Wick Everyone 4 yet. Everyone still here is just AFK. They haven't had time to realize we're talking about John Wick 4 and they need to bail. I'm surprised so many people haven't seen it yet. I'm actually insulted. Yeah. It's not that many. It's like 20 people left. Okay, we'll give you like 10 more seconds, guys. Get out if you haven't seen it. It's Uh, Yeah, you in the audience. It's not that. It's not like super story heavy. But I guess there's one big spoiler you might not want to hear. No, yeah, out of all the John Wicks, there is stuff to spoil here for sure. Um, Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so so leave the episode now. Thanks for listening. (laughs) We'll see All you right, next bye week. Bye. We love you. Patreon.com slash the official podcast. Patreon.com slash the official podcast. Oh, Jake. Thank you. Uh, Wait, are, are, are we ending the recording here? Or is this for the people leaving? I'm just kidding. Just, okay. We're just telling them that the podcast is done for them because they don't want to. Okay, bye. Us. Yeah, Andrew just leaves. Yeah, keep recording. <laughs> okay, anyway, so John Wick 4 was nearly perfect. John Wick dies so at the end, man. allegedly. No. Maybe. Okay. It's Allegedly. ambiguous. I hope yeah. you stop listening no, and we mean, warned yeah. you. Yeah, you better stop listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we gave you a chance. All right, let's, let's start well, off. Okay, so the... John Wick dies. You kind of, you led with the big spoiler. Yeah, he dies at the end. Allegedly. I think that doesn't it's matter one bit because yeah. it's a... It's, it's an action movie franchise. If they need to bring him back, they'll bring him back. And fucking Winston will just say, yeah, we faked his death. To but get the at the same time, shit. if they did that... I'd be disappointed. Well, it's no, it, it's completely it. ambiguous. It's completely ambiguous because he shot in non-fatal locations. Like he he shot in very survivable places. Well, and that doesn't end, matter at all because John Wick is immortal now. Yeah, but, but and at the end he says um, he says Winston, will you take me home? And then when they go to his grave, he asks, "Do you think he's in heaven or hell?" And Winston says, "Who knows?" And they both laugh. Like it, it's very ambiguous whether or not he's actually dead. Yeah, it's definitely ambiguous. But I would still be disappointed if John Wick shows up again because I feel like that would devalue the ending here, like significantly. So I mean, again, the story isn't really the point of it i would say no yeah. keanu reeves yeah. has apparently said that he plans to make more movies depending on if the franchise continues to be successful which this was so they also i think they're making a spin-off movie called ballerina about a one of the ballerina assassin chicks yeah in, huh I, I said they're making a couple like spin-off movies and series apparently which is kind of <laughs> concerning i think that's why they, they introduced I think that's why they introduced the Japanese girl and the black guy, who yeah. really you could have edited those characters out of the movie and it wouldn't have changed anything. They don't really contribute a whole lot to the story at all, but I think they were setting them up mm, for their own universes, their spinoffs. They were awesome, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying like you could edit them out and it would kind of be the same movie. It wouldn't be losing a whole lot. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, what was you guys' yes favorite part? No. Because yeah. mine was... The top I'll down shot everyone's is- yeah, when the specifically when John is walking up the stairs and the Red Circle soundtrack starts playing from the first movie. Yeah. And then it uh, turns into the top-down scene, yeah. The so, top-down top scene, scene. The top down scene was really brilliant in execution, too, because that's the moment he starts using the Dragon Breath shotgun, so you're, easy, you're easily able to follow where he's moving throughout the scene because he leaves a yeah. literal trail. It's, it's, yeah, it's so really smartly done. That whole scene was incredible. Yeah, it was incredible. All of it, the choreography. Donnie Yen! Donnie Yen is so awesome. Donnie Yen is so so awesome. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That's one of my complaints in the movie, if you're talking about things that didn't matter. Donnie Yen being blind did not matter in the film at all. Well, it was just to show that... It was 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 cool, but it didn't matter. At no point was he handicapped for being blind. Well, why would he? Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, he's bad bad so yeah, why make him blind it's not Imagine interesting there's a whole scene where he's like John if only I could see <laughs> I can't see <laughs> so there that's was what one makes scene. him awesome when he's like literally shooting around blindly and missing and not even knowing what the fuck is happening and yet at the same time he's so skilled 
and lethal. That's what makes him badass. I think that it was kind of awesome. does handicap, and it still does handicap him at times. Like I saw him shoot where guys weren't. Like he he does miss shots. Definitely, he's not like. Yeah, that's what yeah, I mean. When he so, just randomly fires into the air just for the sake of like suppressive fire. He doesn't even right. mean to kill anyone. It's just for right, the noise of it. But, let but it's silly it. because then at the end of the duel, he's making all of his shots the same with the same accuracy as John Wick. Huh. Yeah. yeah, but he's like standing and still and right in front look, of him. There, he's there are around. tiny snippets where he's handicapped. For example, the the kitchen scene where he plants the doorbells. Yes, but it just oh, felt so it good. felt like the whole problem is that he's so badass. It's like half the time I didn't even remember he was blind. You know, I I wish yeah, there was so more. Like, he, I think the most handicapped he was was when he like shoots through a bunch of glass displays at the museum, and he goes, "Are you that John?" Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. the theater uh, yeah. laughed in our case. <laughs> I, I guess I guess what happened is as the movie went on, it became less of a thing. In the beginning, like less in that scene yeah. with the glass shoot, with the kitchen, with the this, that. Yeah. Yes, it was done well. But I'll, I will give you a great example. During the casino, he drops a flashbang. And, and he makes like a little quip and blinds the other guys. And I thought what would be clever is maybe if there's something where like he has his sunglasses off and he stares directly at it. So like he doesn't reveal that's what it is or, or something where he's like, oh, you're blind now and I am too, but it doesn't matter because I'm cool. Just anything. But it felt like the whole last half of the movie, him being blind did not come into play at all. You know what I'm saying? I just don't think it needed to. They still played around with him being a blind assassin the entire time. It's just they didn't. Yeah, yeah and and I guess I the, guess the like only thing where it really annoyed me is and... John. Sorry. I think the only place it genuinely annoyed me, like everywhere else, it was fine. I think the only place it annoyed me is during the duel. He and John are hitting the same accuracy of shots, and I'm like, "There's no fucking way if he's blind would that happen." Well, wait, they're, they're standing still. Well, no, like, he they're... wasn't though. Well, oh, yeah, you mean were... at the very end, the duel. Yeah, yeah, between but, him and yeah, John. Yeah, but like Jackson says, he, he they were standing still. Usually when he misses his shots, it's because he doesn't know where all the people are. Yeah. If he knows that John is right in front of him, then yeah, I mean... Yeah, if I he knows that he just has to turn 180 degrees and shoot straight to hit John, that's like... Yeah. Yeah, I think true. I, it's, it's a small thing. Anyway, it, I, I just it think his whole character was awesome. His whole character was fucking badass. Um... The black I loved guy, these. Mr. Nobody, the tracker I was fun. I loved. The um, I loved the the main villain in this one, the marquee. Yeah, the marquee was I super good. Cool. Yeah, yeah, super Marquis. fun. <laughs> Such it was, a douche. <laughs> it, it was really nice to see the progression from this guy, like being like extremely powerful, like commanding respect of everyone, and then as as the movie progresses, and John Wick is still alive and like indestructible, you see the panic rise in the marquees. And he, and he starts, like, getting desperate. I really mm -hmm. like that, because it, like, yeah, adds the, to the both characters. Yeah, the tracker guy keeps giving him lip and, like, hanging yeah. up on him and shit. That was fun. That was a so lot I actually have character. a different perspective on that. I actually thought that, like, he wasn't a bad character by any means, but I actually thought it was very underwhelming, because the whole movie they set him up is kind of, like, cowardly, who delegates everything to people that are strong while he himself is not. So I thought that was a little underwhelming as a match for, like, John Wick as the main villain. I would have liked to see him be able to hold his own in a fight. I would have liked to see him have some level of, like, skill or proficiency in killing, like, yeah, everybody he... else in the universe. It was kind of weird to, like, see him... You know the scene where he, like, stabs the black guy's hand onto a wooden yeah. stump? And he's like, well, you have to pull your hand out now. And you're like, wait, is this guy actually that badass? Or does he just do this to other people? Did he... Does he have any well, he, skills besides being a billionaire? What, what's he, going like on? He ruled by fear, basically. Well, his whole character is yeah. His whole character is tyranny. All throughout the movie, he has opulence surrounding him left and right. He goes to the polo stables, and the women just ride horses around for his amusement. In the earlier scene, he has the women doing sword fighting, and it's literally just like, oh, look what I can do. Like his whole character is, it's all a front. He's, he's kind of a wimpy, scaredy coward, which is what you see at the end. But he comes in and he's like, look how badass I am. I run this company now. My fucking, what was it, his father before him? He's like, oh, my, he fucked up, but I won't because I'm doing it right. I'm super scary. But then he's just revealed to be a big pussy. I think that ties into one of the very, no. I have a few criticisms of the movie. One is that the Arabian, like the one 
who sits above the table thing. They just literally wrote that out of the movie, I guess, for some reason. Where, like, John shoots the elder in the first three minutes yeah. of the movie. Which, I, I don't know why they decided to do that after setting that whole plot line up in the last movie. The whole point of the last movie was like, oh, this, this guy sits above the table and he just took John Wick's wedding ring. He's going to come back with a fury and revenge and take back his ring. And then it's literally like 10 seconds of, oh, yeah, we lost your ring. Bye. <laughs> yeah. And then mm-hmm. the guy dies and is written out of the movie. It's, it's, I don't know why they made that decision. I think it could have been a really, really cool plot for him to go after, you know, like the OG assassins, the Hushashin. I was going to say that was my biggest criticism as well. And it came down to John's uh, purpose, I guess, and motivation. I felt like the way they were building John's character was that his entire purpose was to dismantle the table itself, like get rid of the actual upper hierarchy or whatever, whatever was leading the table to make sure that it, you know, couldn't exist in the future and hurt the people uh, the same way that it hurt John or whatever. Um, That's what I thought his purpose was. And then it wasn't. Yeah, the, like, my all biggest of the criticism. Movies set him up as a very, like, spiteful and vengeful person. Like, you just disrespected my wife. You meddled with my finding peace. So I'm going to just literally kill hundreds of people now, just out of spite. And then he just goes, "Oh, you lost my ring. Okay." Yeah, the, right now it's just about like escaping that life again, or leaving the life again. My Which biggest is criticism of... is that the Marquis's right-hand man was Mr. Krabs, and that just threw me out of the whole movie. Boy, that wasn't his right-hand man. That was the guy that uh, represents the table. Mr. Krabs? Yeah, that's Mr. Krabs' voice actor, I believe. Yeah. Oh, I think was it? Right. I, yeah. I, thought, I just He's... thought of that the whole movie. Wait, who? I knew he was... Uh, he the guy familiar. with the Spanish guy? He's also in Detroit Become Human. Yeah, Clancy Brown, right? Oh, mm-hmm. oh I didn't know that. Yeah, I was thinking that the whole time. Yeah, I, I loved him as well. I thought he was a great addition. No, he was good. I'm just kidding. I will say, I yeah, will say cooler. my genuine biggest criticism. I liked the movie overall. I did. I enjoyed it. But it's a problem with John Wick in general from the second movie on. I hate the bulletproof suits. I hate Me it. Me too. I was thinking I the same thing. Hate I them. hate it. And the second one is my favorite. And the second there's one is a my big favorite, reason I hate it though, they Kaya. added the fucking... Huh? There's a big reason I hate it. I'm glad you hate it too, but there's a big specific reason I hate it. In concept, I get it. Like, it it looks cool and it provides a function. Like, oh, they have body armor so they can tank some bullets. Fine. But every single firefight, Keanu Reeves is running around ducking his head into his coat pocket and it looks really stupid. Yeah, like he's running from the rain. It looks stupid. Yeah, like he's running from the fucking rain the whole time. It looks (laughs) stupid. And also, it it may... I understand there were... They upped the ante. Now there's like 30 people shooting on John, shooting at John, but it feels like it doesn't matter anymore. Like half of them aren't yeah. hit, even hitting. And even when they do hit, they just hit, hit his fucking jacket. It actually feels like less of a danger now when 30 exactly. people are firing at him at the same time than in the first movie when it, he was literally just fighting like one or two guys. Yeah, so going I, into this movie... Thing to like, it got, yeah, navigate so going that. into this movie, kind I had forgotten... Cartoony and the, Go ahead, Kyle. I was gonna say he just it's like you're watching Wolverine now you know John Wick will literally jump out of a fucking five-story apartment and just walk it off or he gets shot 27 times and he walks it off it's like okay well if he's immortal now it's it, it kind of devalues the gunfights they're not as clever kinda takes as a bit of the tension yes. out as well that is, that is the biggest ever. problem I had so when when the um I remember the exact moment it clicked in during the shootout in the Japanese hotel Um, there's the scene where he's in the room of all the glass windows and sculptures and shit, and the samurai-looking armor dudes come in, and John Wick is shooting them, and the bullets bounce off because they're wearing armor, so he gets creative, and now he has to kill them, like he sticks a knife in the suit and shoots into it, or like he puts the gun between the plates and shoots a guy, or like he constantly... I love the scene where he has one guy who just keeps getting shot and keeps standing back up, so he has to like distract him with bullets so he can beat up the other guy. That was great. But then the problem happens where that same principle applies to John Wick, meaning now all these goons show up and unload like 30 bullets into him and nothing happens and in the beginning of this movie i had not watched i I didn't watch three i watched the first two and uh i had not like thought about john wick in a very long time i have not rewatched them since they came out so i had completely forgotten the bullet you've never seen three 
No, I never watched three. Oh, okay, three, so, three introduced that. Fuck? Three at the end introduced the like body proof armor, basically. Where yeah, you and I to... knew I knew about it no, because no, but, wait, hang on, let's no, be more wait. specific. Two introduced the body, uh, the bulletproof the suit. suits. Yeah, the suit. three introduced yeah. the high table emissaries, who yeah. are mm. armored out. No, yeah. I knew I knew of the bulletproof suit. When uh, they were in two, right? Yeah. Or did I watch? Yeah. yeah. The, the, suit itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the bulletproofness yeah, yeah, yeah. that John gets. I knew, I, I'm saying that the high table emissaries, the guys in the SWAT gear, like the oh, high table yeah. okay, okay. where you have to shoot through the, the layers. Yeah, okay. Basically. So, yeah. so either way, either way, yeah. not important. All what, where it goes is, I knew John Wick had a bulletproof suit, but I had completely forgotten this detail about John Wick. I just remembered John Wick action movies, Keanu Reeves, whatever. So when I'm watching the movie at first, they shoot him a few times, and I'm like, oh fuck. Now he's going to be handicapped. Now it's going to be even harder. But then I noticed they're bouncing off. And I initially thought the guy in the re in the uh, hotel who got hit by an arrow in the arm was just a super badass and was like, yeah, I'll block this arrow with my arm. I don't fucking care. <laughs> it was very anime. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was just a badass and he was going to be like a, a doesn't feel pain, unstoppable tank of a human. So when Keanu Reeves got shot like 30 times and nothing happens, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Oh, that's right. His suit is also bulletproof. And the problem is then every action scene becomes like a war of attrition where you can't really stop either side. You have to creatively kill either side. And that's an OK idea. But unfortunately, half of the fighting is just let's send every single man that we can who doesn't have armor on at Keanu Reeves and expect this to work. And it doesn't I, at all. Like I said, it's the, also the, the just... people that the people that go after him without armor are the normal bounty like hunters. Hooligans, when, yeah. yeah, like literal normal people. <laughs> uh, anytime it's the table hunting him, it's the armored people. Right, right. Yeah. But, but that it's just he's led... too unhurtable, though. Like the yeah. scene yeah. where at that uh, traffic scene where just like fucking five cars hit Keanu. Yeah, yeah, and just keeps getting back up. There are times in the action scenes where I just thought, oh, okay, I, I get it. You know what I mean? It just, it was a little like too much yeah, no without any. It, it was too much without any recourse. Like Keanu would get fucked up, but then he'd be perfectly fine. And I'd be like, well, what's the point? He's just going to slaughter these guys. I'm not, he, uh, I don't care. He, to be fair, though, he, like it's not he was perfectly fine. He noticeably kept slowing down. He, he just kept going. Like he was constantly like breathing yeah, heavy, but yes taking and no. breaks. And okay, yes but and no, he, because his he, slowing down is. He gets kicked down like 500 flights of stairs and he goes, yep. uh, uh, yeah. and then he gets back up and he's completely yeah, that's, fine. That's a, that's a perfect example. So throughout the movie, he's slowing down a little bit. He falls at a five story window onto a car and he gets up and he limps toward the stairs and you go, oh, wow, he's still going. And then he goes up the stairs and gets kicked back down. And you would think that's the moment where he needs help. He needs either Donnie Yen or the other guy or anyone to like something to come in and save him or help him. But in Instead, Donnie Yen shows up and goes, I need you to go up those stairs, John. And those words instantly turn him back into unbeatable Superman. Like nothing happened. You know what I'm saying? It's it's like it was entertaining, but I think at a certain point I just kind of zoned out a bit because I was like, and then John killed the bad guys, and then he killed the other bad guys, and then it just felt like there was a point in the movie where nothing stopped, nothing felt like an obstacle. It just kind of was there. That's yeah. his whole character, though. More, yeah, that is his whole character. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's it felt boring. more impressive. I think what we're saying is it felt more impressive in the first movie, for instance, when he yeah. was still mortal. Yeah, exactly. And he right. was, you know, skillful. Yeah, that's the value I don't know where this is so coming from, people. though. Like, the car, for example, at the end of the first movie, he gets fucking blasted by a car, I think, twice, right? And he was still fine. He still got up the stairs and killed the bad guy. From the very inception of John Wick, he has been, like... He can take any amount of punishment. Him getting like, run over by have, a car. Yeah. He, he, he gets hit by a car. car. Yeah, he gets that hit was by a end. car. But didn't he? Didn't he? Then after killing the, uh, you know, the boss, finally he like crawled to the vet surgery and had to put himself back together. And he does that here too, like for not to the same extent that it was in the first movie. He gets shanked by the guy. Nope. I uh, at that. the end, at the end of the movie, remember the guy's got like the car in the in the garage and he drives it into John. So, 
the problem that we're facing here is the Superman dilemma. It's the same thing with Superman in the comics. You know, if Superman is totally unbeatable, why is he interesting? And good Superman comics often write it as moral dilemmas. Like, okay, Superman, you can save Lois Lane, but that nuke will go off in Metropolis instead. And it's like, oh, fuck, even though I'm Superman, this is a problem. I just didn't feel a lot of that for John Wick, and it made some of the points of the movie just, I know exactly what's going to happen, there's no tension. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, with yeah. Superman, they at least yeah, this, they have like, well, there's this magic rock called kryptonite that can hurt that too. him like yeah. everything else normally would. John Wick has no kryptonite. Again, he just gets hit by like seven cars in a row, jumps out of a skyscraper, gets kicked down a flight of stairs, and he just keeps going. Exactly. And there's no so times. normally in these movies, normally there's in these movies, either in the very beginning or towards the climax, there's a scene where they're powerless because it raises the stakes. You could have started this movie saying, John, your suit is fucked and we can't make you another, so you're bullet vulnerable again. Uh-oh. And that would have been really interesting. Or th halfway through the movie, it could have been like, oh, I destroyed the suit. I can't use it anymore. Now when I go confront the Marquis, I'm doing it solo. Oh, no. That's interesting. But when the whole movie, you establish John Wick literally just cannot be shot at all in any capacity, and you never change that, Ever. it makes a lot of the fights, fe fights feel kind of weak. Kind of just does, pointless. I, 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 get, I get it. Like, it does devalue the tension. Uh substantially if the main character can't be injured essentially or he can't you know be taken out of the fight or the people or the don't have like don't an actual way yeah exactly. or people don't yeah. have an actual way to like beat him he like he can't lose it does devalue the point but at some point i think john wick maybe after the second movie um john wick like the the focus became just like high octane action that is, yeah. he, he basically I, is a superhero at this point. The right? way I would review this movie is I was entertained, but I was never invested. To give you a good counterpoint, with Fury Road, which is a high-octane, non-stop action movie, I was super invested because they felt like they were on a run for their lives. Like, the whole movie, they could be blown up or shot or run off the road, and they're, like, desperate, and everything's dire, and they don't trust each other. Whereas with John Wick, at no point in the movie did I feel like he was, like, against insurmountable odds, and it was always just John Wick's gonna kill them. That's right. Yeah. John Wick will win, yeah. and it just kind of, after an hour, like two hours that's of nonstop the, fights, it got kind of dull. That's why the John Wick dies at the end thing also kind of rings hollow. They just look at it and go, "Ah, eh, it's John Wick. He's not dead. He wouldn't die of that. Yeah, He's gonna exactly. Be alive for the next movie, John Wick Five. Anyway, th yeah, I think that was my criticism. Still awesome that movie. We, we, we talked a lot Insane about criticism, action. but I, I want to reevaluate that the movie was incredible. The action was insanely good. It was good. so yes. good. Yes. It was very Such entertaining, a good movie. very Still, fun. You should also, go see it. Also visually, it, it was gorgeous. Yeah. Every I, I saw it with Aaron. Yeah. I saw it with Aaron, and I leaned over to them while we were watching it, and I said, I like how every scene in this movie is just setting up where John Wick is going to kill people. And it's completely yeah. deliberate. Every location in that movie is gorgeous and varied and interesting and just creates it's such, it. like, visually entertaining fights. It really creative, does. Creative. I was really impressed by the level of creative shots as well. Like, there was a lot of variety in how they actually engaged in the filmmaking aspect of the movie. And I, I loved it. Like, Japan feels varied and different to uh, Berlin, and Berlin feels different to Paris. Like, that they all... They all feel unique. Each act feels entirely separate, almost. And I, I loved it. It was very good. A lot it of was. Fun. I think the movie's an action masterpiece. It for sure is it an is. action it masterpiece. Really mm -hmm. I uh, you know you what's going to happen with again, it, right? Just... It's what? it's huh? going to be one of those movies where everyone goes to YouTube and watches clips of just the fights, <laughs> and no yeah. one's going to discuss a single <laughs> other part of this movie ever again. Well, the the entire movie is the fights. It's like three hours of action, and that's it. Yeah, it really is. As it's kind of nonstop action. During the movie, I had to pee, and I, I actually felt like, yeah, you know, when do I go pee? Because there's never any pause. There's never any <laughs> down time here <laughs> like, i'm gonna miss the next action so even if i go pee mm -hmm. so here you guys can fill me in on something i do, i don't remember if i should have known this or not why did he go to germany to meet russians 
Oh, that was in three. Yeah, that's his family. Oh, basically. Okay, that was in three. Yeah, that's the one I didn't. Oh watch. yeah, you need to know three. Oh well, he's a. Uh, I think it's implied he's like a gypsy or a gypsy assassin or some shit. He was, a, he was an orphan that was uh, put into that family. Yeah. right? they they adopted it. So yeah. that that's another another thing. The film I don't think did very How well. How have you not seen three? Just never got around to it. Um, I don't I don't think the film did a very good job of catching new viewers up. So I, I have no. seen the first two, so I wasn't just totally in the dark. But even just the throwaway line, for example, the bulletproof suit thing. Imagine this is your first John Wick. Because like, oh, your friends want to go see it in the theater. You haven't seen the previous ones, but it's a big movie. There's no line in three or sorry, no long in, in this one. That's like, oh, John, you still wearing that bulletproof suit, huh? Oh, we've made changes to it. You just have to immediately figure out, oh, those guys are getting shot and brushing it off because the suit is bulletproof, not they're just yeah. super duper tough. Well, that's the issue. But at the same time, it's the fourth movie. General, I don't, no. Yeah, you shouldn't, yeah. you shouldn't be going to the fourth movie as your no, first one and expect to know everything. I, I yeah. don't, I no, don't agree should, because, because it just takes this one is the line of dialogue. Movies in, this is the issue with movies in general now. Like, if I wanted to go see whatever fucking Marvel movies in the movies right now, uh, you guys know I would have to do my homework first. That, yeah, I would exactly. have to watch like seventeen other Marvel movies before I can go watch Ant Man or whatever the fuck. They're yeah, playing but the right difference now. here is this is John Wick Four as opposed to Ant Man Two, where you also need nine movies to fill you in on where Ant Man is. Yeah. Like this one. How long are they gonna keep going? I, yeah, I mean, I, and and even then, I, mean, I don't, you know, I don't, well, I don't just, agree with that's that. That's the inherent issue with franchises, then, right? Like, there's well, no, no, no like, it's an issue with with yeah, lazy kind of. writing because it takes one line of dialogue to fix that. When he met Lawrence Fishburne in the very opening scene, and he brought the suit, he literally all he had to do was say bulletproof, just like you like it. That's it. Boom! You have filled in every audience point, member on that fact. At what point does this get fucking tiring though? When we're like six movies in, and the, like there's a line delegated at the start of the movie where he says, "Oh, bulletproof again, huh, John?" Like, you can do it in Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne does say that though during that scene as he's sending John the suit and four, he says, "Top of the line Kevlar." Uh, I guess okay. Yeah, I might have missed that one. But yeah, I mean, I, get, I still get your point. It's not very. <laughs> I did, well, no, no, no. He says that. He says that at the end, movies. doesn't he? Do, no, he says that at the end when they're in the subway, and he says top of the line Kevlar, and that's fine. But in the very beginning, when John Wick's punching the board, doesn't he only come in oh, and yeah. say like like a one liner like "Oh, add it again" or "Ready to get started" or some shit? Yeah, he says something like "The king has arrived." Are that you was ready it. To go? Yeah. The king yeah. says, "Yeah." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, how, when did John Wick 3 come out? Uh, uh 2019, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, it's been four years. Yeah. I think that's enough time for them to be like, hey, here's hey. a reminder of everything that happened. You know what I mean? It's enough time for you to watch it. <laughs> how have you not seen John Wick 3? Shame on you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. It's a good movie. I don't really have any complaints about the movie. Like, I, a lot of the guy, things you guys are saying are, like, positives to me. Like, I love the fact that it's so over-the-top and, like, super silly, like, a non-stop action. My only real complaint is I don't like how they handled John Wick's death. I feel like there was definitely a better way of building up to that as opposed to just having him be like Helen. Yeah. Like, it just feel it felt kind yeah, of he underwhelming. just says Helen and he succumbs to his wounds, allegedly. It's like, well, I mean, finally. he kind of got shot in the spleen. It's like, <laughs> yeah, finally. Yeah, you, well, he you, gets, you walk okay, everything he else has like off, a little, but you can't take that. Yeah, he has a paper cut on his left arm. He gets shot in the shoulder, I think. The shoulder, the, the arm, and, and the, the stomach. The, yeah. Yeah. I mean, technically, well, yeah, that would kill people. Person would bleed obviously. Out, but, yeah. yeah. But this is John but this Wick. Is John you just Wick. Hate to get smashed by <laughs> like, cars yeah. and shit. Yeah, you can jump out of the Empire State Building, but you can't take a bullet to the stump, the tummy. Like, come on. <laughs> but then, what would we have need to have seen to make his death believable? Like, the, the, well, it doesn't uh, have to be believable. It just needed. I don't know. Well, yeah. It's dramatic. also amb <laughs> it's it's ambiguous. Just, remember, it, you, you're not supposed to know if he died or not at the end. Like, to me, I always imagined his death would be something kind of like what they did, but a little bit more. So he has that, like, quick flashback where he says hell and he sees, like, his wife in his head. Well, I would have expected if they were building up to his death in this one, during that duel, with every shot, he has, like, a flashback of Helen's, really driving home the point that, like, uh, wow, this is, like, really all he cared about. And then it makes, a, it makes it a little more fulfilling when he actually does, you know, clock out. It just, it just it felt really <laughs> yeah. underwhelming. It, it felt sudden. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, it did feel sad. It would have felt yeah. great. It would have been hilarious, though, if as he's dying on the stairs, he, like, shits himself because everyone shits themselves after death. Like, <laughs> the entire end of the movie is just devalued. Is that real John or Wick's... is that a myth? I don't know if that's real or not. That's just what I've heard. Well, what it would, would be, be even so better? funny if they devalued John Wick's character entirely by making, like, shit his pants. Like, his what would be even eyes. better <laughs> is after he shot the marquee, if Mr. Krabs said, Mr. Wick, you have violated the rules of the duel, you will be summarily executed. Yeah, they'd be a guillotine. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, I'm at that point might as well just have John say like yeah we were in an open relationship Helen fucked other men I watched <laughs> if you wanted to value him <laughs> I thought it was cute yeah. that Helen was the last word he spoke but it was definitely I thought it was sudden. cute how he wanted um, I, I thought it was great uh, that he wanted what was it loving loving husband on the tombstone i thought that was yeah, a whole that was, that was a great too. plot point. i thought it was yeah. all big pussy shit because she's been dead for over nine years he needs to yeah, just move to the move fuck on, on. come on man yeah winston <laughs> should have been like fuck no i ain't putting that on your tombstone instead puts like bat like baba yaga on the tombstone yeah. instead. Just <laughs> badass put his killer. kill count <laughs> puts keanu reeves on his it kd ratio <laughs> It's like 400 over also, one. Also, yeah. the other, you know, I, I just realized something. John Wick 4 also kind of has a problem with turning John Wick into Unstoppable Badass. Do you remember who beats him in his house in the first movie? It's like three dudes in Balaclava. And yeah, that's it. The, you kind of got to suspend yeah, your disbelief that, that for is, that kind of shit. Yeah. Well, to be fair, then, to be fair, that was the very first, like, encounter that he had since his retirement. Plus, so he was, like, say, woken okay, up and surprised, it. right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like, well, he wasn't he, in killer if, mode then. He was so, in, I'm yeah. a retired husband now. So, yeah, if he's retired, he can take on, not even take on three dudes with a baseball bat. But if he's in killer mode, he can take on 400 nameless thugs with machine guns. Yeah, that's the thing, though. There like, has to be an escalation, movie, that though, right? sense. I'm this, just making jokes, I know. No, I know. I'm just saying your joke even makes sense. In the first movie, he was vulnerable. Yeah, he gets hit over the head with a fucking baseball bat. Of course, he's going to pass out and get overpowered by three people. By the fourth movie, you have 30 people shooting at him and doesn't even scratch him. Yeah, I really like this one, but, but yeah, I would still, still say the first movie. one's my favorite. I, I think I prefer it to where John Wick feels like because it makes him more badass knowing, oh, if he fucks up, he's dead. Oh, he can get shot and die. Oh, if he's overwhelmed, he's fucked. But he still takes on an entire mafia. Whereas in this movie, throw 4,000 men at him. Doesn't matter. It's just a matter of time. And he'll win. I think the second one is still my favorite because it has one of the best, like, preparation segments in movie history. Where the he's second one is, like... The second one is the one I remember the least for some reason. Really? I like yeah. it. That's the one where Santino D'Antonio hires, not hires, but like basically forces John's hand to kill his uh, sister. Gina, yeah, I don't Gina remember much of it. It's so That's weird. my it my ordering action scene. My ordering would be four, three, one, two. That's that's my order for my favorite. Okay. What about Mine you? Would be two, one, four, three. I think. Charlie? Four, four, one, three, two for me. Okay. And Andrew, yours would be one. the second one? One, two, four. <laughs> or sorry, one, yeah. one, four, two. One, yeah. <laughs> one, four, two, and then three. I'll update you when I finally watch it. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, the third one is a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. They're all fun at the end of the day. Like, they are just fun. They are. It's not... Yeah, like, I, I didn't hate it. You know, I, I have a lot of critiques, but I, I still... It's a very, it, yeah. very, very good theater movie when you see it on the big screen oh, with yeah. all the loud sound. Because I, I gotta say, that was probably also the loudest fucking movie I've ever seen in my life. Every gunshot gave me tinnitus. Like, they really cranked that shit up in our theater. Well, I, got, I forgot to say, I fucking love the soundtrack and as well yep soundtrack was also excellent so if you good. if you want just an exciting like experience go see it in the theater it's just a yeah. totally fun watch very enjoyable it's so fun it, it was also one of those movies where it's better when you watch it with an uh other people when the movie theater is full and in this movie you know the scene where the dog 
pisses on the guy's face after he Everyone gets shot in the head. <laughs> and everybody, yeah, everybody was cheering. Or, or when oh, Donnie just, ends, uh... says fuck, fuck off to uh, to uh, the yeah. Marquis. Yeah. He, that that <laughs> moment you just was reminded great. Me, you just reminded me, I think there was when... a couple in our theater who didn't know what movie they were watching because as soon as one of the like major gunfights started and I think it was during the restaurant when Keanu kills a guy in a particularly brutal way. We heard a woman behind us go, nope, and she and her boyfriend walked out and never came back. What? <laughs> Jesus. How do you fucking that buy a ticket for John hell. Wick 4? <laughs> I just remember that. Oh, man. It was so funny. That guy is not fuck? having any fun in his relationship. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> That's a fucking shame. <laughs> I was my wife loves John Wick I made her watch all the three movies in preparation for the movie so now I feel even luckier <laughs> so, that's so sweet it's yeah, so it's nice cute. Um, all right let, let's wrap there I feel like we've been going for a long time we talked about John Wick a lot I feel like we were mostly negative then which is strange I, I do want to just reiterate it's a fantastic movie I love I loved it I like the complaints that I have for, uh, for it are so minuscule in comparison to all the praise, like incredible action, incredible visions, uh, visuals, incredible soundtrack, like just three hours of fun, basically, like just yeah, nuts to butt fun. If, if you want to um, be, if you want to be a normal little goober and not harshly critique and analyze movies like I do, you you will absolutely enjoy this movie. If you just look past its flaws, it is it's still a nine incredi- out of ten. Oh yeah, it's it's still super solid, still very entertaining, still very fun. If you don't look too deeply into it, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, loved it. Um, yeah. Other than that, thank you for listening to this week's episode of the official podcast. We'll see you next week. Uh, oh wait, Patreon. Did, wait, did I just say? I just zoned out. Did I say patreoncom slash the official podcast? No, you were. You did now. Right. No, you did. Okay. Okay, patreon.com okay? slash the official podcast for bonus <laughs> episodes. I just like, it's so that hard. <laughs> Forgot the last two hours of my life. Okay. Uh, thank you for listening. We'll see you all next week. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.